it in galoshes, and you have a raincoat, a rubber raincoat on, you're nuts, you're crazy. Why should I listen to you? And then God, and the preacher wiped his brow, and he said, yes, that may be true. But I did pray for rain, and I know it's coming, and I want to be ready for it. <laughs> Let's take that. Let's talk for that. <laughs> Today we're going to look at two aspects of uh, consciousness and uh, try to deal with it. One of them is, and remember, I said consciousness is that observing, that, that spiritual entity that's observing the moment. Remember that. So two aspects of that consciousness is one that to observe the moment with the lens of memory. It's kind of interesting. Because I think many of us, or most of us, observe what's going on through the lens of memory. Think about that. In other words, something's happening. We say, my God, this has happened before. Here's what's going to happen to me because of this, uh, or this or that. And so we're bringing into the moment something that happened in the past. And of course, in consciousness, we're recording all this stuff. I'll give you an example of that, and uh, spiritual teachers call this filtered consciousness. Mm -hmm. Filtered consciousness for dealing with things in the past, and then, you know, applying them to what's going on right now. Well, uh, Billy is in his 50s, loses his job. That's an example of this. And he, re <laughs> he remembers my dad was laid off when he was in his 50s as well. Filtered conscious. He's laid off. And my dad, I remember my dad saying, who would ever want to hire a person in his 50s? Nobody would. So my dad never recovered from that. He never got a job again. He was always without a job. And see, that, that statement by his dad, and if you're young enough, let's say six years or younger, you record that as actual fact. And it's there in the subconscious. It's in the consciousness. And it will bubble up, and it bubbled up for this guy. He's in his 50s, and here is that. It comes out as truth of the existence. He says, I'm in my 50s. I won't be able to find a job. And so his consciousness is dealing with the experience out of memory. Many times we have things continually happening in our life. And we wonder, what is going on? It's because it's something that's embedded in the, in the, in the subconscious, which is a memory bank. Mm -hmm. It's bubbling up and expressing itself now. And we need to realize that. This is what happened when Stephen Covey pointed out to these prone, accident-prone people, hey, something's going on here. <laughs> something's going on. So anyway, that's called uh, uh, you know, observing through memory or filtered consciousness. And keep in mind that that this, uh, this consciousness idea is a power that ignites our creative faculties, which means that all of a sudden, what's igniting in this man's life is the fact that I'm 50 years old, or 55 years old, and I'm unemployable. Isn't that incredible? That is so incredible. And that's what, what happens. The second aspect is, we won't spend a lot of time, that could be a three-hour seminar. You know, with the filtered conscious. I mean, that it's an incredible seminar. I'd like to do, do it again. I did it once before. The second goal is the second focus, uh, the second aspect of consciousness is, is what we celebrate today: the cosmic consciousness or the Christ consciousness. And it's that total awareness of who and what we are. It's knowing that we are. And I like to say this. I know you get sick of it, but I am a son and daughter or daughter of the CEO of the universe itself. <coughs> That's who I am. And so, when I'm confronted by anything in this life form, then I, don't, I come from a power, an empowerment idea. That I'm an empowered being. I am one with this universal energy. And I love to say that that creative universal energy is called love. That's what it basically is. Uh, Joanne gave me some CDs. It's called The, the Powers by, by Byrne, who wrote The Secret. It's absolutely awesome, and she's right on target. I approve what she said. <laughs> anyway, basically, and what it means to that we have a consciousness that when we're face confronted with or we're doing the, the dynamics of the human drama, we have in mind this fact, and then Steve's going to like this because he said it to say, I am enough. I am enough. Can you say that? I, I am enough. enough. And so if somebody's in my face, negative, and living in the past, and worried about the future, and we're listening and we're witnessing that, 
but our conscience says, I'm enough. I have all the skills, everything I need, all the spiritual tools to transcend anything that's going on because I'm related to the CEO. I'm one with the CEO of the universe itself, and therefore, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to call this, a, I want to call this, I'm enough, my radical reliance on source. I have a radical reliance on source. There's no need for me to take this to bed me and worry about what happened today. Let it go. I'm not going to be able to take this situation with me when my body wears out and I'm moving on to the next dimension anyway. It's not that important. It isn't that important, is it? No. No. So move on. Yeah, take a life. Yeah, take a life. <laughs> Good story. That I got permission from Jan Burgess to mention this again. A few years ago, she had a something in her ear, on her ear, and the spot it was dark and looked terrible. And so she gets a diagnosis. You've got melanoma. And your melanoma, we need to actually amputate your ear for you to survive. It's got, you've got to take it off. And knowing Joanne, as we all do, <laughs> and she told me when she related the story, she said, I came in here to this universe with two ears, and I'm going out with two ears. <laughs> that was number one. And of course, she did her prayer treatment. She saw a shaman. She did all the things that Joanne does. But bottom line is, she could have drifted into what we call filtered consciousness and said, oh my god, I got melanoma. I'm going to die. Because the, the history shows, memory shows that anybody who has melanoma, they're a dead duck unless they cut off their ear. Well, she didn't buy into that. Now, I'm going to suggest and don't have your cut off if you have melanoma. We're not trying to tell you that. We're just telling you the experience that Joanne went through. And Joanne then said this, I will, I will do this. I will leave it up to the divine as to when my time expires or when I'm done in this universe. It's up to the divine. And if my time's now, it's cool. But the bottom line is I'm whole, I'm complete, I'm one with the universe, I'm at perfect health right now. She looked beyond the disease itself. She became the practitioner that she really is. She looked beyond the situation. And as the observer, this is the consciousness that the, it's observing the moment, her consciousness was connected directly with the divine. And so here she is, what, seven or eight years later, she wants you have two, you have two ears, don't you? She has two ears. <laughs> she's, she's dead. See? So anyway, it's, it's tremendous. Another real quick one, because Magic Johnson's picture was in the Flood of Fresno Bee uh, yesterday. And here's Magic Johnson, who I, I love watching. The, the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, <laughs> I love watching the live in Los Angeles Lakers, and still I think does too, but Magic Johnson's a superstar, and he gets diagnosed as having AIDS. Yeah, this was about 15, 20 years ago. And being Magic Johnson, he said, you know, I'm going to have to retire from basketball because I don't want my fellow, men, my fellow friends to get AIDS because I've got them. So he resigned and he retired. Now, what could he have done? He could have fallen into what we call the filtered consciousness, the consciousness of memory, that people with AIDS said, doom. It's, it's a, you're doomed. You're going you're gonna to leave the planet. Or he could have done something else. And he did something else. And he's not, a, I don't think he's a new father. But what he did, he decided to go into the inner cities. And he decided to create businesses. He, so that people there could have jobs and entertainment. And so that the inner cities would brighten up and, and be prosperous. That's what he spent his time and his energy on. And what happened? Here it is, what, 15, 20 years later, his picture's in the paper. He's with a group of people who want to buy the Los Angeles Dodgers, for goodness sakes. You know? I mean, this is Christ consciousness in action. It's having the, the beauty of our being, being identified with, and we identify with it, that we are this awesome creature of, of God.